Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 1061B, and today's date is August 29th, 2016, and the title of the episode is The Propaganda for the Perfect Storm This Fall is Now Being Pushed. Let's get into the economic collapse, political, and geopolitical news. Now, a couple days ago, DC Leaks came out with a 2500 Internal Open Society Foundation document to shed light on one of the most influential networks operating worldwide. And we talked about how Soros, Obama, the UN were involved in the European refugee crisis, how they created it. We also talked about how Soros wanted to overthrow the Russian government. And after the website DC Leaks posted the Soros documents, it looks like its website was yanked offline and the Twitter account was also suspended. So you can see these individuals, they are aware of what's going on. And just like Erdogan out in Turkey, whenever something is out there talking about what they're up to, it seems like they take action and they shut things down. Now, as we know, the FBI, CIA, NSA, the everyday police, they hardly use warrants when they're going after cell phone data, emails and things like that. And we realize and understand that they believe this doesn't fall under the Fourth Amendment. And of course, the government makes up their own laws to try to override the Fourth Amendment. But remember, there's no law or anything out there that overrides the rights of the people. And a federal district court in D.C. ordered a seizure of Alonzo Marlowe's cell service location information held by his cell provider. It held that the federal government didn't need a warrant at all to obtain the CSLI data from a person's phone provider. Now, all the agencies, they use the Stored Communications Act of 1986, which governs the searching of such data under Section 2703D of the Act. The uh, federal investigators need not demonstrate probable cause in order to search. All they need to do is merely show some facts, that there is maybe some type of criminal wrongdoing. And the Fourth Amendment is then thrown out the window. And of course, this is the excuse that they use saying that, yeah, see, we don't have to abide by the Fourth Amendment. We're going by the Stored Communications Act of 1986, and we're using this, which overrides the Fourth Amendment. But you really need to read the Fourth Amendment because... It says the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation. So when you hear this, you can see right now that They have violated the Fourth Amendment. Now, the Cato Institute, they filed a motion with the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit supporting the appeal of Marlowe and his co-defendants. For the purposes of the Fourth Amendment, cell phone data is a paper or effect in which there is a right of the people to be secure. The Supreme Court made clear in Riley v. California in 2014 that giving police carte blanche to search a phone incident to an arrest would in fact give police officers unbridled discretion to rummage at will among a person's private effects. Now, Marlowe is protected under the Fourth Amendment. It is his effects. And it does not allow agencies, the government, to look at this. I mean, if you really think about it, allowing warrantless searches of the CSLI violates privacy as much as rummaging through a person's physical papers back in 1776. There really is no difference. And we can see right now the United States government, central bankers, they're trying to get around the rights of the people. And they continually try to do this by creating other laws. But nothing overrides the rights of the people. It doesn't matter if it's electronic or paper. It is your effects. It's your information. 
and unless they get a warrant, they have no right to it. This is why the Founding Fathers created all of this. They didn't do it because they say, hey, you know, this would be good to have. They did it because they understood what governments do, how they get around the laws, how they do it for the best interest of themselves and not for the people. There was nothing protecting the people. And what they did was they created the Constitution, the rights for the people to protect them against a tyrannical government. And that is what we're seeing today. Now, we understand the Department of Defense, they've been falsifying accounting records in a tune of about $6.5 trillion. And of course, they just can't find that anywhere because, you know, it just disappeared. Now, a private company, if they ever did that, individuals would be arrested and they would have gone to jail, but not in the government. They say, oh, it was a mix up. You know, we falsify these things all the time. Can't blame us. We're government people. Well, if... They can't find $6.5 trillion. How do we know that the Department of Defense is actually providing security for the people? That they're spending trillions of taxpayer dollars to protect the United States. If they falsified a document where they can't find $6.5 trillion, wouldn't you think they'd falsify everything else then and lie where all this is going? That they're really not providing any type of security? And if this is the case, we need a full investigation of what is going on here. Now, out in Ukraine, we see something very interesting happening here. We see Ukraine secretly announces the seventh large-scale mobilization and they are bringing more and more troops up to the contact line. And it really looks like they are preparing for something huge here. And we know that Russia is out there continually calling on Ukraine to calm the situation down. Let's get back to the Minsk II ceasefire. Let's have a ceasefire. But we can see at this point, United States government, the central bankers, they want a full out war. They want this to get started one way or another. And I would expect we're going to see some type of false flag event occur in this area very soon. We almost had one in Crimea where they sent teams into Crimea to, to destroy the infrastructure there. And I can see right now they're preparing for another type of false flag to try to provoke the southeastern or Crimean people into a war. This is where they are headed right now, and we need to watch this situation very, very carefully. Now, over the past couple of months and just recently, we see that the United States is provoking, you know, China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran. We also see that the U.S. attempted to fly a drone into Iranian airspace. Now, the Iranians warned the U.S. saying, do not enter this area. If you do, we will shoot it down. So once the warning came out, the U.S. turned the drone around and flew off in the opposite direction. We see Iran right now. They are setting up the Russian S-300 surface-to-air missiles at its Fordow nuclear facility. They are doing it to protect their entire area right there because they are getting word that something might occur and of course as we know as time goes on the entire plan of the united states government central bankers was to go into syria and then eventually go into iran and we can see through this entire p5 plus one peace deal that it did not go in the way the united states wanted they wanted iran to put their oil on the dollar they decided to go with the euro eventually they will then go most likely with the yuan or ruble and move further and further away from the dollar. The one thing that the United States was able to do was to keep Iran a non-nuclear state where they don't have a nuclear weapon. Because if you notice, the U.S. government loves to go into those countries that don't have nuclear weapons and 
basically have regime change in those countries. And what they're trying to do out in North Korea is get rid of their nuclear weapons because it will make it easier for them to have regime change in that country. And those countries that do have nuclear weapons, it poses a problem. We see the U.S. government is out there saying that it no, it's no longer against al-Qaeda. And we can see that they're only going after the Islamic State. Well, they're really not going after the Islamic State. They're letting the Islamic State scurry off. They're not fighting al-Qaeda because that is their proxy army. The Islamic State is their proxy army. And we can see right now, since the name change of al-Qaeda into a different name, al-Nusra into a different name, we see the U.S. now says, okay, they're not a terrorist group. They're not on the U.N. terrorist group list and we can supply them with arms and this is exactly what the u.s is doing right now now we see that turkey is invading syria they're moving deeper and deeper into this area and there are warnings now where they're telling the kurds to back off to get onto the other side of the euphrates river and what i see happening here is the U.S. and Turkey working together, creating chaos. Yes, they have their cover story. They're, go they're both going after the Islamic State. And Turkey is also going after the Kurds at the same time. And I think the United States, they're using the Kurds to help them in their mission, their agenda. And their mission is to get Assad. And with Turkey coming into the northern part of Syria, the Islamic State was just allowed to leave. And Turkey was able to capture that area very, very quickly with really no resistance. And we can see right now they are spreading out in the northern area because this has been their plan from the beginning to create a corridor, to create a buffer zone in this area where they can use this as a forward launch base into the rest of Syria. We see the United States giving warnings now to Turkey, you know, stop hitting the Kurds, but it looks like they're really using the Kurds. They needed that area to create the bases so they could have a launching pad into Damascus. And it looks like right now that Turkey and the U.S. might be really working together. They might be putting one over on Russia. And it looks like their entire agenda is the same as it's always been to go after Assad and remove him. And of course, they're using this cover story that we're going after the Islamic State, we're not doing this, but you can see from their actions, not their words, their actions, that they are creating this entire zone in the northern area of Syria. And we can see this is going to really get worse as time goes on. This is not a good situation. Talks have broken down and the whole situation is going to escalate as time goes on. Now, we talked about a perfect storm coming this fall. We have the economic collapse. Things are getting worse and worse. We have war around the globe. And then we have the elections. And we know there are two candidates that are up for election. And we know that the neocons, the elite the shadow government wants one candidate and doesn't want the other. And I don't really care for either of them. Whoever works for the people and only the people and not central banks, not corporations, that doesn't have any other interests, that's the candidate for me. And the only interest they should have is to the people. And I know candidates say a lot when they're running for office, but their actions will speak louder than words. So right now, to me, I feel that the shadow government, the elites, they still are in control no matter who gets into the White House. We need to get rid of the central bank. But we can see that the propaganda is running wild for this perfect storm. The FBI has uncovered evidence that foreign hackers penetrated two state election databases in recent weeks. And they're warning that it's the Russians. Now, of course, they're showing you the IP addresses. They're showing you how they got all of this. And, of course, we're getting this flash alert from the FBI Cyber Division. And like I've said in the past, when they come out with this information so quickly, you know it's propaganda. 
do you really think a state actor like Russia is going to launch attack against the United States election systems from Russia? Come on. They would never do it from that area. It would bounce off probably thousands of different areas around the world. So you can never trace it back. And people say, well, of course you can trace it. Well, if that's the case, why don't they just eliminate spam? Why don't they just get rid of all the viruses? They don't have the ability that everyone thinks they have. It's very difficult to trace an IP like this, especially this quickly. But what they're doing right now is they're creating the propaganda to make you think that the election systems can be hacked. Now, we have two things going on here. We have the Zika virus, which is spreading in Florida. Cases in New York might be moving out towards the West. We have the election systems that are hacked. This is all propaganda. They're setting this up so they have a cover story when things don't go their way. If the elections aren't going in the direction they want, most likely they will have some type of state of emergency. Now, it could be the Zika virus and just one state, and they can say, listen, we need to postpone for a little bit. Too many people have come down with it. Too many people have the Zika virus, and it's just not possible to have elections at this point. If that doesn't work, if that story is not ready to go, they can say the system was hacked, we need to postpone. If that doesn't work, they'll move on to the next story. We had a physical attack here. We need a state of emergency. Riots are spreading across the country. So you can see that they're getting prepared. They're using the propaganda to try to delay the elections. Temporarily, of course. And every time they say temporarily, you know it's permanent. So this is something we need to watch and we can see the propaganda is really being pushed on the American people. Now, there was an interesting article uh, by Megan Stewart on survivalsullivan.com where it says, what would life be like after an economic collapse? And I thought it was very interesting because she started off saying, if you're waiting for a public announcement, a news headline, to let you know that, hey, here's the, uh, the economic collapse, here we are, it just started. Well, it's not going to happen. It never does. You might see the stock market go down. Even when the stock market was going down in 2008, they really never said we were in a recession. They didn't say we have a major problem right off the bat. That came much, much later. What she's saying here is that things gradually get worse. That it sneaks up on you and you don't even realize it. One of the points she's saying is you'll see increased and widespread hunger. Grocery stores and other businesses will fail one by one or be shut down because of riots and looting. I mean, we saw it in Detroit where there were five national grocery stores for over 700,000 people. You would see sporadic public services, school systems, They'll experience frequent strikes. They'll be shut down for days at a time. There'll be power issues and outages. Roadways will be filled with potholes. There'll, there'll be other signs of despair. The water from the tap might taste a little funny. So you'll start filtering. Garbage collection will be sp sporadic. They won't come every single day. There'll be social unrest. People will protest. You'll get used to the protests. And then the protests will then grow. You'll have to take different routes to work if you still have a job. Transportation, daily travel. This will be fraught with angry mobs. And you'll have to use alternative routes again to get to your job. Criminal activity. You'll see crime increasing as time goes on. Streets that used to have houses on every lot will morph into desolate patches of houses as people lose their homes. And we're seeing all of this right now. It slowly happens. 
And before you know it, the collapse is upon us. Everyone is sitting here waiting for this big bang. Before the big bang, before the big market drop, before everything falls apart like in 2008, we have all of this leading up to the main collapse. Unemployment. More and more people you know will experience job loss or layoffs. These are all signs. And as time goes on, all these things get worse and worse and worse. And before you know it, we have the collapse. But no one noticed it because it was very slow. Actually, think back to 2007 going into 2000, even prior to that, when you saw what was happening with the subprime security crisis. People were leaving their homes. People were delinquent. There were neighborhoods that were completely empty. Those are the signs. We are seeing the same signs today. The collapse is upon us. Listen, everyone. Thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.